Hey guys, it's Kristen with HK Wax Center. I'm gonna to talk to y'all about the best temperature for waxing. Um, now before I dive in, if any of y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, um, and also if you are either an esthetician or a cosmetologist or currently in SD or Cosmo School and on Facebook, uh, feel free to join Wax Club. It is for professionals only, but it is a really great group of people who are just always happy to help and very kind. So feel free to join Wax Club if you would like. Now let's jump in. Okay, so best temperature for waxing. I get this question multiple times a week. All, I mean, I just, I constantly, I'm always answering this question, whether it's a comment through email, a text message, YouTube uh, or um, Facebook comment, whatever it is, I'm getting it all the time. Um, there is no such thing as walking into your salon or wherever you're waxing turning on the warmer to one setting, leaving it, um, and not having to adjust it throughout the day. Not gonna happen. It's whoever made that up is just a big fat liar. Um, you are always gonna have to be constantly adjusting, turning up, turning down, stirring your wax. Um, it's just part of what we do. And once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to maintain. Um, some reasons why temperature is something that I say don't focus on. There's so many factors that come into play. Um, the size of your warmer is big, whether, or a big one, whether you have either like a little small one pound warmer or a big 12 pound warmer. It's, that alone is going to make a huge difference. The larger warmers do tend to be regulated better. Um, then smaller ones, smaller ones are really are a lot harder to maintain just because they're so tiny. There's only so much wax in there. And once you're using the wax, you have to constantly replenish it. And that's a whole other story. But, um, but yeah, the size of the warmer and how much wax is hitting the inside, um, the inside level of your warmer. So say like this one right here is a square. So I have a lot of surface area hitting the inside of my warmer. Um, how much wax is in your warmer also plays a big part of it. If you only have a little bit of wax, uh, you don't need to turn it as high because there's just a lot less for the warmer to heat. Or if you have, it's completely full, um, then you're gonna have to turn it up because it's got a lot more work to do to regulate that wax. Um, that comes into play the brand of warmer that you're using. Even if you have two warmers that are two different manufacturers, two different brands, say they're both set to 75 degrees Celsius, doesn't mean that's actually going to be true because they're from different companies and not everything is made the same. It's just part of what it is. So um, do not focus on temperature. Um, the temperature in your room plays a big play. Um, if you have your AC running a lot, the airflow in your room, um, our door is constantly opening and closing, do you have a fan on? Um, the temperature outside is going to affect you as well because say it's really hot outside, you're going to have your AC running in your room a lot more, which means that AC is going to be hitting that top level uh, surface of your wax. So that can get cooler, which means you have to stir. Um, Again, just don't focus on temperature, focus on consistency. I actually have three wax warmers set up. Uh, one is a warmer that is too warm, one where the wax is too cool, and one where it is perfect. So let me show you guys, because I know some of y'all are visual, instead of me just talking. So we have number one. This one, the wax is way too hot if you can see it just instantly falls right off the stick there is no hesitation this would a hundred percent burn a client if you put it on them and they would um, probably never come back to you very very hot wax so that is not good next we have a warmer where the wax is way too cold. It is still moving. Obviously, I can still stretch it, but it is barely, barely moving. This wax is way too cold. It would not be functional. You would not be able to spread this on a client. It would just be an absolute nightmare. Not good. Okay, and then the last one is going to be this one. Now this one, the consistency is perfect. So you can very easily 
pick up the wax. It is still gonna move, but it's not just going to instantly fall off the stick. So this is where the wax moves like honey or molasses. It is just absolutely perfect. Um, and the way to really achieve this is by stirring. You have to constantly stir your wax. Um, if your wax ever gets too hot, add some more beads in it. Those beads will melt pretty fast because the wax is hot, um, but you can change that really easily. And then if the wax is too cool, then crank it up a little bit and then start stirring from the outside. So from like these out corners, because this is where the wax is going to get warm the most is right on the outside. So then I would just start stirring and picking up the wax on the outside and bringing it in the center like that. Um, and then that will regulate the rest of your wax. But you have to understand stirring is 100% um, a huge key with getting your wax to the right consistency. You have to stir. Every time I'm waxing a client, um, I will stir like a quick little, you know, circle or figure eight. Every other time I go to dip a stick and get more wax. Um, that seems like a lot, but again, it's it only takes a second. And if I'm already walking over here to pick up a stick, you just do a quick little stir to get your stick and go. Um, that alone will make your life so much easier. So don't focus on, on temperature, focus on consistency and stir your wax. Hopefully this helps. Any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys next time.